Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be using this kit you're seeing on screen from Gina K Designs. This is her new holiday kit. And I'm gonna walk you through the different items in the kit. There's lots in this one. This first one is a six by eight stamp set called Holiday Tapestry. I'll be using that stamp set today actually. And then there's this other six by eight stamp set called Sparkle and Shine. That's what the kit is named after. It's actually the Sparkle and Shine kit. There is the Ornamental Snowflakes 4x6 stamp set. This stamp set, I just, I think it's begging to be heat embossed, right? With metallic embossing powder. There are eight sheets of cardstock in Red Velvet, Fresh Asparagus, Turquoise, and Craft. This really fun festive stencil, it's actually called festive. Uh, a set of three tags, this is the Tag Trio dies, and then the Snowflake Trio dies. This kit has so much in it, I'm only gonna be using the stamp set today and then the cardstock. I'm hardly putting a dent in all the stuff that's in this kit. I've cut some of that turquoise sea cardstock down and I'm taking the really large image from the Holiday Tapestry set and I'm going to position it on this cardstock so I can stamp it twice to get sort of a continuous pattern. So I'm stamping this bottom section first and I'm going to be heat embossing it so I'm prepping my area with an anti-static powder tool and then stamping in a sticky ink. This is Versamark ink and it remains sticky long enough that I have time to apply my embossing powder. The embossing powder I'm using today is Alabaster from Brutus Monroe. It's a nice, bright, opaque, white embossing powder. So I uh, dumped some of that on and tapped it off and then used my heat tool to heat set this until it's smooth and melted. And you can tell that it's completely melted when you tip your cardstock in the light and you don't see any of the powder texture anymore. Should be all smooth. So I nestled in that stamp again, just rotating it, stamped it, and then heat bossed it once again. And now I have this really cool pattern going all the way across. I'm only going to be using the big tag on my card today, but since I had more pattern to work with and a second tag die, I decided to go ahead and die cut both of these. And I can save that smaller tag for a different project in the future. On the large tag, I've I've taken tra Tranquil Teal ink from Gina K and a blender brush and I started blending kind of a little bit near the bottom but more near the middle. My idea is to have it become, become a little bit darker as it comes down the tag and then at the very bottom it will be very dark. So I've grabbed In the Navy ink from Gina and I'm blending that onto the bottom of the tag. And this is just going to intensify the color at the bottom. I went back to that other shade just to get it to transition a little bit more smoothly. And then I grabbed a paper towel and buffed off any of that ink that was just sitting on top of the white embossing powder. So I buffed that off and now I have this really awesome kind of ombre blended tag. I'm going to be doing an envelope to go with this card today. So I have a big red envelope. It's a five by seven envelope from Paper Source. It matches the red of the red velvet cardstock in the kit pretty well. Just figuring out where I'm going to position this on the envelope. And then I had to move to my big, huge, big mama Misty, <laughs> the memory Misty, which can accommodate 12 by 12 paper. And that's so that I can have my envelope open while I stamp. So I actually didn't need it event, you know, actually, because I decided to not do a second stamping on this, but initially I thought I would stamp this twice, similar to what I did on the turquoise C cardstock earlier, but I actually only ended up stamping it once. I liked how it looked with just one stamping. I went, I went with the same procedure, anti-static powder tool, inked up the stamp with Versamark, and then stamped down onto the envelope. So I'm going to be changing up the color of embossing powder I'm using for the envelope. I'm now going to use Icicle Embossing Powder from Burtis Monroe, which is a very clear embossing powder. It's going to give it sort of a watermarked look because the clear embossing will just look like it's wet on top of this red envelope. It's just going to look a little bit darker, very tone-on-tone -tone look. So as I uh, heated up this envelope and all that embossing powder. I kept my heat tool moving quite a bit because I didn't want to have 
it kind of stay in one area too much and warp the envelope. And it worked out really, really well. So I'm gonna put that envelope aside and work on the card. I'm going to be using some more of that red cardstock, or actually we haven't used it yet at this point, but it matches the red envelope. Just trimming down that red velvet cardstock from the kit. And then I'm going to be stamping the Merry Christmas greeting from the stamp set in Versamark ink. Now, just a warning for this particular stamp, it's got very dainty lines. So when you stamp with it, use a very, very light hand and don't squish the stamp too much because if you kind of press it a little too much, it will start to blob out and then you won't get that really fine detail. Use the alabaster embossing powder on that Merry Christmas, trimmed it down, and then I started to assemble my card. This is a five by seven card base made out of some Nina Classic Crest Solarite cardstock. And I adhered the large tag, and then I put a white border around this Merry Christmas using a gel pen. Put some foam adhesive behind that, and then I took some red baker's twine, and even though my tag was already attached to the 5x7 card, I was able to feed that through and tie a bow at the very top. I thought just having another little instance of red would be nice. Okay, so I think I said I'd heard that Merry Christmas earlier. I had not, obviously. Um, so this is what I do. I put uh, layers of adhesive on the back. I doubled it up on the one end so that I could have the end hanging off that tack. So I press that down. Hi, Soph. Can you guys hear my cat meowing? She's coming in to say hello. By the way, Sophie turned 12 this weekend. Can you believe she's 12 already? It's crazy. She looks like a kitten. <laughs> So here's my envelope. I've picked out some postage stamps. Um, I have one that was already a sticker and these other two are vintage, so they need moisture on the back. Um, sometimes I use a water brush to do that. Other times I just get a paper towel a little bit wet and press that stamp onto it. So that's what I did for these today. And then I'm going to be using some white ink and a very, very small brush to write on the address on the envelope. I'm using some Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White ink. I already had some in a little tiny container, so I'm just using that today. And I'm also using a size zero round brush. This one is from uh, American Journey. So I'm just going to be brush lettering on Gina's address. This is actually the address uh, for her shop where she ships out all of her orders. Um, I don't believe her store is open right now because of, well, lots of reasons <laughs> that you can probably imagine, but um, she is shipping. And so you'll be able to order this kit and it will ship out from this address that I'm putting on the envelope. So I'm just lettering all of that on, taking my time going. I actually went very slow while I was lettering um, originally, but I did speed up this video um, just for time purposes here so that I could kind of speed along and not spend 10 years here. So I'm using this bleed proof white ink because for as the name suggests, it's waterproof. So this envelope will go through the mail without any problem. It does not need any waterproofing because that embossing powder is on there. And then I'm using a waterproof white ink. You could also use a white gel pen for this. I think that would look also really, really nice. I just wanted to do some large lettering and thought using a brush would be a little bit easier. Turning the envelope around, I'm writing my name and my return address. This is just my mailbox um, on the flap of the card. So that's pretty much finishing up the card and envelope for today. I really like this combination. The, the card is very simple, but with a little bit of ink blending and the envelope is super simple as well. Remember, you can pick up this uh, kit, the Sparkle and Shine kit, over at GinaKDesigns.com in her shop. Um, last year's holiday kit, I don't think it lasted very long. I think it eventually sold out. So if you would love this kit and the stamps and the dies that are in it, you'll want to pick it up as soon as you can. Thanks so much for watching today. I will see you guys in another video soon. Actually, my next video will be my live stream on Friday at noon mountain time. So please join me here at YouTube at noon. Um, we're gonna be doing some live crafting. It's been a lot of fun meeting you guys in the chat 
and I can't wait to see you guys on Friday. Until then, take care and thanks for watching. Bye.